Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today I'm doing a very special video as you can see I'm going to build a board that is made for games like The Walking Dead, Marvel Crisis Protocol, Batman basically whichever uh, city urban setting you want to play your miniature skirmish games in and we're going to be making this board now this is a build that I made for a friend of mine who is just getting into The Walking Dead and since my channel five years ago when I didn't really know what I was doing back then uh, started with building things for The Walking Dead, I said, well, yeah, I'll make you a board and this is what it what it turned out. So, as you can see, the street lights really work and they are hidden underneath some removable pieces of the sidewalk that can easily be clicked back into position. Now, so yeah, if you guys want to know how I build this board, I would say follow me to the crafting table and let's do this! Come on! All right, friends, let's make a modern terrain board with working streetlights. And this is where I've hidden the switch. <laughs> so let's begin with two XPS isolation boards that are 120 centimeters by 60 centimeters. And I'm going to cut them to form a one meter by one meter square board. Now I've cut 20 centimeters on uh, the side of one to make it one meter long and 60 centimeters wide which is 60 centimeters is the normal width of these boards now on the second board I'm gonna mark out 100 centimeters and 40 centimeters and it will look like this now I'm gonna cut away the lines that we've just drawn there slow and steady cuts you could use a hot wire cutter, but I don't have one, so I'm using my uh, alpha blade here. Just make sure to be slow on this one. Slow, don't go, try to cut through it in one go. Take your time, just straight, straight cuts. And you will now have a one meter by one meter square, or 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. But as you can see, these are two loose parts, so we're going to attach them together. So I now coat both pieces in PVA glue and attach my two foam board sheets to them. Make sure the edges run in the opposite side as they do on the XPS board. Now if you don't have foam board, use cardboard or you can go to the hardware store and uh, get an MDF sheet and let it cut to one meter by one meter and simply glue them on top of that. But I only had the foam board, so that's what I'm doing. Now put some weight on it to let it dry and do the same for the second piece of foam board as well once you've glued that on. But do make sure to put some weight on it and let it fully dry before uh, flipping the board over. Now once that's done I simply flip the board and uh, cut the excess foam board off. But again make sure that it's fully dry. And as you can see we now have a 1 meter by 1 meter base board. So let's get creative and begin by mapping out uh, some street plans. So feel free to use whatever type of street layout you prefer. Look for some reference images online or in movies and books. Now what I can tell you, uh, this is if you're going to create a street light, somewhere between 7 centimeters and 10 centimeters, you are good scale wise. So have fun creating your little section of the city. Feel be feel free to use this draft I'm going to make my road 14 centimeters wide with each lane being seven centimeters but again use whatever design you have in your head guys or whichever you prefer this is just mine now from the right edge I measure 33 centimeters and I mark out the halfway point which is 16 and a half centimeters as you can see here now from the halfway point, measure again two and a half centimeters to the left and two and a half centimeters to the right to create a, a five centimeter width. Now I'm going to create my first big street and I'm measuring up uh, 40 centimeters, as you can see here. Now I draw two lines to form my road barrier. And these are to connect the two and a half centimeter marks that we've made before. And I'm simply drawing a curve by using a, a tape roll. Now on each side of the barrier, I measure seven centimeters. This is to mark out my two street lanes. Okay, so where the 40 centimeters ends, use that as a starting point to measure 33 centimeters further up. 
but again feel free to use your own design guys this is just how i did mine i know it sounds complicated <laughs> so it will look like this so 40 centimeters all the way to here and from that point i'm measuring 33 centimeters up to here and do the same on the other side of the board as well mark that out and now draw a straight line from both the beginning and the end of the 33 centimeter mark this will create uh, the second big street lane that I want to have on this board. Now, as you can see, I'm comparing this with my plan, roughly. It's just to give you a little idea, but do make a plan. It makes the building easier. All right, so I measure another 10 centimeter on the opposite corner and draw another straight line up. This is basically just uh, another street or an alleyway or whatever. Now I'm going to create another alley which is 7 cm wide which connects both left and right side of my board like this. Now the blue out outlines mark out uh, where the pavement will be and here is a 143 scale car for size comparison and it also gives me a good excuse to play with another toy car. <laughs> now I'm going to mark out my corners of the sidewalk on a piece of foam board. And I'm simply placing that on the blue markers and I'm simply drawing on some dots. And then drawing a line. Connecting the dots. To have the side of my foam board. Now I'm taking my, uh, my blade and I'm proceed to cut out my sidewalk. Or pavement or whatever you want to call it. Cut through the foam. If you are gonna cut, make sure that you cut to the place where you're going to glue your foam board and not cut through your roads. <laughs> now, I'm going to round off my edges using a tape roll and trace the corners, just to give it some more uh, interest. Next, I'm using my scissor to cut out the rounded edges. And it will look a little like this. Looking cool. Next, I peel off one side of paper you can uh, spray some uh, alcohol on it and it will make it easier to peel it off. Or if you have ready board, you will just have to look at it and it will fall off. <laughs> now, all right, so I'm taking uh, my ruler and I'm going to mark out half a centimeter edge around the entire sidewalk and then draw a straight line all around the sidewalk like this. Now, on the inside, I'm going to make a grid which is 5 cm by 5 cm. Now, one edge will probably not be completely 5 cm, but that is okay. As you can see, we're just simply going to mark a grid of 5 cm. Now, next, I'm going to score these lines with my knife and then trace them with my pen. First, score the lines. Do not cut through them, just simply score them. Now, to create a border of the sidewalk, uh, just indent or score two centimeter marks all around the pavement, as you see me do here. And with that, we have our first uh, piece of uh, sidewalk done. Now, we're going to do the exact same thing for the other sidewalks and the road barriers. if you have more road barriers or more so sidewalks. Now I measure the length of the road barrier and draw this on a piece of foam board and then again using a round object create the curve. Now it is five centimeters wide and I simply cut this off with my scissors and there we go. Cutting my, and here is my first road barrier. Now I'm using this as a template to form the other road barriers that I have and I'm going to cut them out as well measuring them up against the other part as you see me do here and there we go measuring and tracing and then cutting them out now the road barriers you can simply uh, start by gluing on now and as you can see i've made some more uh, uh, sidewalks as well now just glue on the pieces uh, of sidewalk that you want and the road bears but guys do be sure where you want your street lights to be do not glue that pavement down yet 
Now these street lights, I bought them at action around the Christmas holiday seasons for about 4 euros. And they are for a pack. And these are a perfect scale for these types of games. I will, I will mark out where I want them to be, concealed, and cut straight through the pink foam, but not through the foam board. Be careful not to cut too deep through the foam board. So stab at them with the scissors, slice at them with the knife to get a nice, uh, a nice deep, shallow box, hole. <laughs> Just make a, a hole where you can fit in the, the battery box, the battery pack, like this. Now I draw lines where I want the cables to go and I cut the grooves for the cables as well. At a diagonal angle, like this. So I can lay in the cables of the street lights. Mark out where you want your street lights to be when you do this as well, of course. We can later fill these gaps with some uh, wood filler or compound, doesn't matter. Now hoover the offcuts because this creates one hell of a mess. Now it will look like this as you can see. Cool. Now, I wanted to have a park with some walls around it, so I'm going to make that right now. And I will begin by cutting four strips of XPS foam, which are 3 cm high and 1 cm wide. And I'm simply going to draw in a brick pattern. Now, feel free how you approach this. I'm just going the easy way, drawing some lines and scoring in some brickwork. But you can use a roller or stack brick by brick, whichever way you prefer guys I'm simply going for the old school quick and easy method and if you're wondering why there is a masking tape around my pen it's because I pressed it down too hard and I snapped my pen in half <laughs> but it still works don't forget to draw in the bricks on the top of the wall as well and the sides and the back like this do try to keep a, a consistent flow with the bricks that they match up. Now, once you've drawn in the entire brickwork, start by texturing all four pieces with a tinfoil ball to create a, a more realistic uh, stone texture in them. Don't forget the tops and the sides of them as well. Do all four the wall pieces, all four wall pieces. All right, now glue down the stone walls, leaving at least one entrance open to enter the park, but I used two. Now you can see I've drawn, a, drawn out a map on, the, on that sidewalk there, and I'm using white glue, but I can advise you, use hot glue for these walls. It will go a lot quicker, because uh, I eventually remove them and attach them with hot glue. But yeah, you can, if you have time, use white glue, it doesn't matter. But just glue them down on, the, the, on the, the piece of pavement here. All right, now for grass, I'm using this super cheap uh, fake grass mat that I cut to fit. It was about 40 euro for a big roll. And yeah, you can work and you can easily cut this. Now I'm simply placing that on top of my pavement and I'm marking out where I want my road sections to be and where I want my little stream to be. By the way, I did not film the stream. Uh, it was simply just paint and then covering it with a gloss varnish. But here you can simply cut out the grass pieces, only the grass pieces. And now before, just dry fit them. And as you can see, I have this non-woven uh, texture wallpaper and it has a perfect looking cobblestone pattern on it and it's very cheap and yeah you can find this at any hardware store and uh, this is also by the way a good way if you want to make a medieval uh, city cobblestone you can use this for for it as well and usually I think you can find it at any hardware store well here in Belgium you can at least I don't know where you guys live but yeah just have a look around, you can probably find it. You can glue this down with white glue very easily. 
Now put that down first because I really like the texture for cobblestones. Now put this down first before you glue on your grass mat. And once you're gonna glue down the grass parts, uh, you just use white glue, but be sure to weigh them down because uh, the mat, you can easily glue it with white glue, but it has a tendency to peel up, so put some weight on it. Now for the street lights, let's do them. I laid down my cables on of the lamppost and glued them into place with a bit of hot glue or super glue. Both work just as easily. I also cut a small strip of the sidewalk tiles to lay in more parts of my cables, as you can see here. And then pressing it in with the super glue to lock it into position. And I'm gonna use hot glue to attach my lamppost to the foam board. Also, which I did not uh, mention, also gluing down my park light, where the boxes uh, of the light switches cut that part out of the sidewalk tiles. I forgot to film that, but once you lay down your uh, sidewalk, mark on the sidewalk where you want the street light, uh, what the box of the battery pack is, and cut that out of the tiles. Now I'm also gonna <clears throat> make some cracks in the pavement, as you see here as this is a terrain board for the walking dead so it doesn't have to be a nice pristine board my friend is play, playing walking dead so I'm gonna make it a, a decaying city street now these pine barks will make for good looking rocks and I also cut away the strip of non-woven wallpaper that will be my river stream which I simply paint with uh, brown paints and green paint mixed and then cover it with several coats of gloss varnish. Now I'm gonna fill in the gaps that I made by uh, laying down the cables of the streetlight with some wood filler. Now for my road barriers, I was also want them to have some grass, so I'm using my cheap grass mat again and measuring, cut them to size and glue them down. Now this is optional. I'm going to make a mixture for asphalt, but you can just as easily roll a tinfoil ball on the XPS roads instead. That will work perfectly as well. Now my mixture is one cup of water, two cups of drywall compound, and one cup of sand with a little bit of PVA mixed in the water. Now pour that all into one jug and start by mixing it until you get a paint-like consistency as you see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Now paint it, all, paint it on and then stipple with a damp sponge. Now go over the sidewalk as well. But on the sidewalk be, be gentle. On the streets you can be liberal but uh, just stipple small parts on the sidewalk. Not too much. But uh, be liberal on the streets. Now here you can see me working it with a damp sponge. Just by stippling it on pressing it on do this outside <laughs> especially the next part be sure to do that outside or your uh, significant other will kill you if you do this inside the house if you're gonna start by sanding all the the pavement and this in the road so do that outside guys brush away the dust again do this outside <laughs> Now I'm going to spray a 50-50 mix of water and PVA glue all over the board. It's just to make sure that, the, that my asphalt remains locked in position, which it should, but um, yeah, I'm just making sure. <laughs> now I'm going to paint all the roads and sidewalk with a dark gray and then give it all a coat of a heavy, heavy dry brush with a lighter gray basically an overbrush and once it's dry it will look like this taking shape now I'm gonna do a black wash and then dry brush with a white paint and once that's completely dry repeat the entire process black wash and a white dry brush all over uh, the pavement and the roads and don't forget the walls here as well can co you can go over the cobblestones as well, doesn't matter. You can even go across the grass, it really doesn't matter, but make sure that you get the sidewalk and the roads. Now for road markings. I've laid down some painter's tape at the halfway point of each road 
and I'm uh, making sure that I leave three and a half centimeter gap between each of the the road markings as you can see here and here I just uh, lay down for a center line just have a look at road markings and pick whatever suits your fancy and yeah use that technique to make the road markings and here I've covered the entire board to make my road markings and I'm stippling on uh, white paint but just stipple it on don't paint it on just stipple it on if you want it to look brand new yeah then paint it on or use an airbrush but I'm simply stippling it on now once the tape is peeled off you probably peel off some of the paint as well because I know I did now we're going to touch this up I'm giving the rose a layer of a very dark gray which was also the intent but go cover the entire road section with a dark gray not the pavement only the roads and yeah be careful not to uh, paint over the road markings you just drew of course the yellow lines that you can see in the bottom corner are done with the Avalon Sunset now I'm gonna stipple on the road markings with a bit of dark gray just to give them some weathering look you can use a wash if you prefer but I'm doing it this way now I paint the street lights black but be careful not to hit the lamps because that would uh, yeah, take away of the purpose that they actually give light. <laughs> so be careful not to hit the light bulbs of uh, the street lights, but paint them black or whichever color you want your street lights to be. Like so. Just a black acrylic paint. Now, with a brown paint, I'm gonna paint the grass areas. Just rub it in good, because it, once it's dry, the green will shine through, but you will get a, an earthy type of tone. So just uh, be liberal with the brown paint and don't worry too much about it that it looks too dark. The green will shine through. That's what I love about these grass mats. They're easy to paint, but you can get a pretty realistic effect on them. Or you can just flock the entire area if you want to, but just trying to show you guys some different techniques that uh, are on a budget and uh, are pretty handy to do. I've done my entire D&D uh, &D tiles with this. Yeah, looking cool so far. Now I made a template of a one and a half centimeter crosswalk and I begin by putting it on the board wherever I want my crosswalk to be. And then stippling it on the same way as we did our road markings. Like so. Cool. Now with a, a light green, I'm going over all the grass areas again. But do make sure that the brown paint is dry before you do this. Every time you go over the grass areas, make sure it is dry. Now I printed some newspapers and sewer manholes, which I will now glue down into position with some simple straight up uh, watered down PVA glue. And I'm going to do this wherever I want sewers to be or newspapers to be. Just basically some scatter stuff. Now I'm going to cover the sewers and the newspapers with a sepia wash and also splotch some of this sepia wash all across the board to dirty it up. Like oil stains or whatever. Now the river is just brown and green paint 50-50 mix and then several coats of gloss varnish. Which I also made a tiny little bridge for. Now let's put some terrain on the board and level. have a look at the finished piece. Here you can see some uh, trees on the road barriers, some zombies. A car crash, some police cars, a little van, more undead, and here a group of survivors who are kind of in a trouble with all the undead surrounding them. And you can see a lot of the terrain is things that I've made five, six years ago on this channel. By the way, those videos are crap, so <laughs> you probably won't learn much if you watch them. But I'm going to redo them slowly but surely, time by time. You can see an apartment building, a tattoo parlor that I've made. And I will show you how I've made these buildings uh, in future videos, so no worries for my modern terrain crafting fans. <laughs> I will get to those videos as well. So yeah, thank you all very much for watching guys and all your support. 
really means a lot and i hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more to come in the future all right guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one bye for now everybody bye